my broskies and my broskets, welcome to episode 5 of the one for You audio show. A show about gaming, a show about life, a show about wrestling, a show about whatever the hell I want it to be about. I am your host, the Dashing Adnan on Twitter, Adnan Qureshi to the rest of the world, also on Vine, making funny vines just for you to watch. Uh, and I'm here with episode five of the One For You show, just for y'all. How you guys doing? It's been a while. Uh, what's new with me? I'm about to finish school. Very excited about that. To celebrate, I got myself a Hulu Plus account. That means I can finally start catching back up with current mainstream wrestling. So I can talk a little bit more about that on the show in the future. Talk about Daniel Bryan's WWE t Championship win and loss at the same night. But not going to talk about that today. Join Club Nintendo. Going to get some free stuff out of a Club Nintendo membership. Because I've got a lot of these codes that have been sitting around in all the Nintendo games that I have. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Nintendo later in the show. But we're going to start off with uh, something a little different. I uh, have myself my first... First ever viewer voicemail that I'm going to play for y'all and answer the question for. This viewer voicemail comes from my good friend Michael. Uh, Michael is the co-host of the TMI Information Show, uh, which stands for Tim and Michael Information Show, which is a show about... Um, Essentially, if you're an artist, uh, it's it's a show about how to become a better artist, uh, things you can do, tips, tricks from two guys who do different forms of art, whether it be uh, drawing or doing theater or writing. Uh, and it's a really interesting show. You can check out their YouTube channel at TMI Art Productions on YouTube and check them out. Support the TMI show. But uh, let's see what Michael has to say with his viewer voicemail. Hello there, Mr. A.K. It's Thrash, A.K.A. Michael from TMI Show. We just wanted to ask you a question. So, as we're going forward into this new era of consoles, we wanted to ask you, remember way back when when we were able to see a couple games that were still coming out on the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3? Are we going to see anything like that in the future? Uh, just wanted to give you a shout out. Love your show. Think it's about time that you finally got this thing up and going. Uh, watch it all the time. And even though you only have a few episodes, you know what? If you, I need to record this, just call me back later, and I'll I'll take this over again because this is not live. This is recorded. Beep. It has a tone beep, doesn't it? All right, bye. Thank you very much for your question, Michael. Uh, I think that is important to note that what you brought up is going to be seen as we get closer to the next gen of consoles. The next generation is coming every minute of every day. And what we're getting closer to is exactly what you may have pointed out, that we're going to get games that are going to come out on both this generation of consoles and games that are going to come out on the next gen of consoles. Just like before, like you said, we had games that were on the PS3 and the PS2, and we had games on the original Xbox and the Xbox 360. Same thing we're going to get, games that are going to be on both the 360 and the 1 and the PS3 and the PS4. And I think a big thing about that that contributes to that is that I feel as though the third party console exclusive games are really dying out now. There are very few games that I feel that are coming out anymore that are console exclusive to just one piece of hardware. And I feel like business wise it's the smarter decision to make because why make money on just one platform when you have all of these platforms that can do almost the same thing and you can reach multiple audiences and make money from your audience there your audience there your audience there uh, a big case in point is that when people freaked out about Kingdom Hearts 3 at the PlayStation 4 event at E3 that game was later announced that it's going to be on both the Xbox One and the PlayStation uh, and the PlayStation 4 I don't know if I said PlayStation 3 the PlayStation 4 it, it will be on both the Kingdom Hearts 3 will be on the one and the PS4 so that's a case in point. That series was mostly a PS2 and a Sony franchise. It branched out with a bunch of spin-offs on Nintendo handhelds, uh, but mostly it was on Sony. But now we're seeing the next main title of the franchise, Kingdom Hearts 3, will be on both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And I think the most interesting titles that are going to be coming out are going to be Assassin's Creed 4 and Watch Dogs for the reasoning that both of those titles are going to be on both next gen and this gen and they're hitting pretty much every single audience that they can because both those titles will be on all systems Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 and the Wii U 
that means that Ubisoft in particular, in this particular case, they're going to hit every market they can and make as much money as they can on every single platform and every single audience that they can. Because if they had just confined it to next gen or this gen or not even like porting stuff to the Wii U, then you're limiting what you can do and how much you can make. Because everything is a business decision in this business. It's just... We're going to hit as many audiences as we can, and we're going to make as much money as we can from those audiences, which I think is good for the gamer, because that means that whatever system that you own, you're going to be able to play Assassin's Creed 4. That means whatever system that you own, you're going to be able to play Watch Dogs, and I think that's cool. It also means that uh, Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo are going to have to do their damnedest with their first-party exclusives to really pull in the audience for what they want, um... Essentially, any of the big first-party games, Killzone, uh, Halo, Mario, the big guns are going to determine which system is going to exceed because of the fact that the third-party games are going to be on all the systems. You know, sports games, they never have become exclusive. And now the big third-party franchises, they're not really exclusive. So now we're just going to have to look at titles like Infamous The Second Son, The Next Halo, Bayonetta 2, and how those will affect the sales of the next consoles. I can tell you right now, like I've mentioned before, the PS4 is going to get an early jump just because of the price point, but they're really going to have to focus on their big first-party titles to keep more PS4s off the shelves than Xbox Ones, considering big titles like Kingdom Hearts 3, like Watch Dogs, like Assassin's Creed 4, like many other titles that are going to come out, are not going to be exclusive to one console anymore. It's not a one-console business anymore for any developer or publisher, and they've realized that, and they realize that this gen, because there are very few of those uh, exclusive games anymore, and I think that was a really good case in point that you decided to bring up michael and i really appreciate your question thank you very much for contacting the one for you show i'm not against uh, anyone submitting some questions to me if you feel like there's a, an important topic that uh, you'd like to have answered you know hit me up if i deem it important enough it might make it on the show uh use the hashtag one for you show on you on twitter or hit me up personally if you'd like with for another uh, viewer voicemail uh thank you again for your question michael and uh let's move on to our next topic shall we the other topic I wanted to talk about on today's episode is revolved specifically around Nintendo. Uh, I love Nintendo. I grew up with Nintendo. I will always have a place in my heart for Nintendo and Mario and Kirby and all those iconic characters. But I also recognize when a company is burying itself in negative PR that it's creating. And it's a very different negative PR that Nintendo is creating against itself than that was with Microsoft. Microsoft, they uh, had a bunch of policies for the Xbox One that people didn't like and they didn't agree with. The used game stuff, the always online stuff. Uh, in this particular case... Nintendo is not allowing their users to give them positive PR. And they're, what, I, what I'm getting at there is two things. It's, it's about free advertising, essentially. Uh, and one of those things that was the Evo tournament, the international like, like fighting game tournament that took place recently in Las Vegas, Nevada. Huge, big fighting game championships for... Uh, Super Smash Brothers for Injustice Gods Among Us, Street Fighter, all those games, they were playable at Evo, and all the best players around the world get to show off their skills at, in those games, and it's really interesting to watch if you're into like watching people play fighting games. So Super Smash Brothers Melee was part of the tournament, but it was almost not going to happen, because Nintendo was like, hey, we're not going to let you stream our game to all the people that are going to watch Evo, which makes no sense to me why you wouldn't want people to just be looking at Nintendo characters in what's going to be an event that's going to be viewed by many people online who are interested in watching these people compete and, and seeing all these cool things that happen, but Nintendo has been on a kick lately of just not allowing people to just broadcast Nintendo game stuff. Uh, and Evo was probably the biggest major incident of that, which was almost devastating to that community for that tournament. And uh, they were prepared to just switch to a totally different game altogether and not have Super Smash Bros. Melee there at all. And then Nintendo decided to switch and say, no, you can stream it. We're going to let you guys stream it. And Which I don't really understand. It's just a way of 
showing off another Nintendo game that people love and admire and get them psyched up for the next Smash Brothers that's coming. I was like, oh man, Melee was so awesome. I wonder how awesome they're going to make the next Smash Brothers. But no, Nintendo is not letting their users do that. And another thing with that is that, uh, a more well known is that Nintendo isn't allowing people to put up their Let's Plays of Nintendo games anymore. Um, or if they are, they want essentially compensation for it. For those who don't know, a Let's Play is a video where people just play video games and then they like record their own dialogue playing the video game or just record like their own gameplay of them just playing the video game and they just upload it to YouTube mostly or whatever site. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe Twitch TV, they kind of specialize in just video game streaming stuff. And uh, that is just another bit of backwards thinking also on Nintendo's part. Once again, free advertising. But we have that from Nintendo when Microsoft and Sony both have in-game capture built into the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Microsoft and Sony are embracing users um, sharing their content, like do something crazy in Grand Theft Auto, show it off, do something crazy in Infamous, do something crazy in this game. Nintendo doesn't want people to essentially show off their own games for a system if they're playing something on the Wii U, it's a system that's not doing well and it's just going to get more people to look at the Wii U if people are putting up their Let's Plays and go, oh man, that looks fun, maybe I should get a Wii U. Um, but Nintendo doesn't want that. They they want to kind of limit their user as far as sharing their own experiences, which is very strange to me because that's just a positive way to show off your system that's not doing well. I mean, Pikmin 3 just came out. That's that's doing well because there hasn't been anything that's come out for the Wii U since launch almost. There's very few games that have come out. Holiday is going to help the Wii U, but I think their own negative PR of not allowing their users to share their own content and show off like their own their their big system now the Wii U you know and 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 show off Nintendo games is going to really hurt them I think just because it'll show off more people who don't normally look at Nintendo games and maybe change a couple of minds if the game is fun but you can't do that anymore not with Nintendo and it really is baffling to me uh uh, that being said, the user capture stuff is going to be very interesting, I think, in the next gen. And I hope that Nintendo kind of changes their mind on it. I believe I heard that even with the next Smash Brothers, it was possible that they weren't going to add in a single player, which I think they've since revoked, like the subspace emissary from Super Smash Brothers Brawl, which was a fantastic single player story, because of people uploading the cutscenes to YouTube. And that happens all the time with every game. You can find cutscenes for any game on YouTube, but because of that, they were almost going to not put in a single player because they felt like the cutscenes were the player's reward for that. But I think, I think that people have fun playing Smash Brothers, and they have people, and people have fun watching games uh, uh, being played. And I think people are influenced by watching games being played to buy some of those games. I know I have. I watched Achievement Hunter do a Let's Play or a Versus that they did in Sega Bass Fishing. I bought that game on Xbox Live Arcade. Never played it before in my life. It was on sale. I'm like, dude, I'll buy Sega Bass Fishing. It looked fun enough. That game's pretty fun. Sega Bash Fishing on the Xbox Live Arcade, that game's actually pretty fun, and I would highly recommend It's five bucks, I think, right now, and I bought it for two, and it was the best two bucks ever. I think it's worth five. It's a lot of fun, so if you see that. So, speaking of which, you know, Achievement Hunter, they, they did a couple of Let's Plays in New Super Mario Bros. U, a fantastic Wii U game, a game that, you know, sheds more light on the Wii U, and Achievement Hunter is huge as far as YouTube views, and I don't see why you would not want someone like that, Rooster Teeth, just in general, showing off your games that are going to get to a big audience and maybe convince a couple people to get a Wii U. I mean, Bernie Burns of Rooster Teeth has said how much he likes the Wii U as a console, and he talked about how it's really a bummer that they can't do stuff like that because he got a copy of Game & Wario. They couldn't show it off on their podcast, The Patch, and he wanted to talk more positively about it, but he couldn't really show off anything about it. And I think that really sucks for Nintendo because right there, there's more positive PR from the users to more users who could become Wii U owners. But uh, Nintendo just doesn't want any of that, unfortunately. And I think that's kind of a drag because that's something that could help Nintendo. But hopefully their holiday season with, uh, well, no, Bayonetta 2 is not till next year. That's sad because I'm waiting for that. But the new Super Mario 3D World coming out, Donkey Kong's coming out, Zelda Wind Waker HD's coming out. Hopefully those will help turn things around for Nintendo and what otherwise has been a slump since Pikmin 3 now. 
uh, hopefully Nintendo will also kind of do pull up Microsoft and look at the whole Let's Play thing and go, you know what, people are looking at this, we're not paying for their, them to do it, they're playing it because it's fun, and hopefully other people will see that it's fun, and they'll start to pick up their our systems just to play it because it's fun. Because that's what Nintendo's always been about, it's about fun, and I think people want to put up their footage of them playing because it's fun, because they want people to see how fun those games are. I, I know I love me playing some Mario, playing some Nintendo Land. If I had a capture card, I'd put up some Nintendo Land footage, maybe, if it was entertaining enough. And I think people would look and go, Nintendo Land's a pretty fun game. Let's get a Wii U. So uh, that's what I wanted to cover on today's episode of the One For You show. Uh, please leave me some feedback, some comments, some rates, some subscribes. Help me out here. Uh, I really appreciate all your support. Uh, recently, the One For You show, episode one, hit over 100 views on YouTube, and I can't thank you guys enough for helping me hit that milestone. And here's to hundreds of views more for any of my, whole, uh, any of my videos and my whole channel, to more subscribers, to more rates, likes, comments, to all you guys, your support, your views. I can't appreciate and thank you guys enough thank you very much for that so yeah go ahead leave your feedback on this episode uh tell me what you thought tell me what you think i should talk about uh as well as uh uh follow me on twitter at the dashing Adnan. let's not forget the twitter plug hey 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 twitter follow yes no maybe so uh you can also follow my friend michael who uh put up that uh uh, voicemail for the show and support his show you can follow him i believe it's thrash 618 I'm not totally sure, but he also has uh, another uh, Twitter account, uh, my, at Michael Ornelas. So follow him on Twitter. Uh, support the TMI show at t uh, TMI Art Productions on YouTube. And uh, also support my show, the One For You show, because this one has been one for you. <laughs> <laughs>